Before I get into today's video, I want to do a quick shout out to an RP giveaway. This isn't a sponsorship or anything, but currently myself and some other YouTubers are doing a $500 RP giveaway. To enter, all you got to do is follow whoever you want to follow on Twitter and or subscribe to our YouTube channels. Link for that will be in the description. Let's take some time to talk about everyone's favorite champion to play against in League of Legends, Fizz. If you haven't been playing ranked lately, you may not know that currently Fizz is a perma ban in solo queue. More specifically, he is the most banned top laner at the moment and the second most banned champion overall, but it's not for the AP one-shot Fizz we've all come to know and love, it's for the top lane Triforce tank Fizz. Top Fizz is so strong at the moment that challenger players currently say he has literally no counter. This is something interesting, obviously, since Fizz is supposed to be an AP mage after all, but tank Fizz is something we've seen before. There were plenty of mages being played as straight tanks at one point in League of Legends due to tank items being so good, but let's take a look at how the current tank Fizz stacks up to other top laners. So comparing him to a relatively random champion who fits a similar archetype as pretty tanky but also can deal quite a bit of damage, let's put him up against Renekton. Renekton being a champion that a lot of people think is the closest thing to a counter pick that Fizz currently has, let's compare these two champions and see the differences in their damage output. We'll place both of them at level 6 and give them one core item for Renekton time at, which he of course built into Hydra, and for Fizz, a Sheen which he'll build into Triforce. They're both reasonable items to buy on your first recall. We can see that with Renekton auto-attacking consistently and spamming abilities whenever they're up, he deals somewhere close to around 90 damage per second on average. Looking at Fizz, that number is around the high 70s or low 80s. Not too big of a difference, but Renekton does have an edge here. This isn't how League of Legends is played though, obviously. People don't just non-stop auto-attack each other and see who dies first in laning phase. They work around each other to try and find quick and short engages to see if they can trade damage in small skirmishes and hope that they come out ahead. So let's take a look at the damage these champions can do in a single combo and more importantly how quickly they can do it. With Renekton that means an E into an auto attack into cancelling that auto attack with your W into cancelling the animation of your W with time at into Q and then Eing away. Let's be generous here and assume that both E's of the slice and dice land on the enemy dealing damage and we'll give him some fury to get an empowered W off in this combo. That will take the full combo's total damage up to 421. Now let's look at a Fizz combo that a Fizz player might do in a similar situation to what a Renekton player would use his combo in. That might look a little like this. Queuing forward into an auto attack into E and then auto attack and W. That's a lot more simple. The only thing going on here is there will be an auto attack cancel with that final W. That combo totals out to 455 damage. Even if we take away one of those auto attacks to speed things up a little bit, that still comes out to 418 damage, almost the exact same as Renekton's. Now I'm sure you can already see that the Fizz player here is doing a lot less to get just as much or more damage off. I mean, if the Renekton player doesn't have enough fury, or if he misses those E's and doesn't get the damage from them, Fizz is already going to be out damaging Renekton by quite a bit, and this is early game, Renekton's strongest point in the match, let me remind you, if we were comparing this to another tank of this archetype, the stats would almost always be much worse and much more favorable to Fizz. But getting back on subject here, the thing that makes Fizz such a good bruiser, better than Renekton and all the other top laners, isn't just the damage that he deals, it's his abilities and how much better his abilities are than everyone else's. The best example of this probably being his E, Playful Trickster, everyone's favorite thing to deal with. This ability lets him go untargetable for a short period of time, as we all know. So let's take a look at these clips again, but count the amount of time that each champion can be fought back against while they're going through their combo, since, you know, only these dummies and maybe bronze players will do nothing while they're being attacked. You, on the other hand, you're going to try and stun the guy attacking you, or damage him yourself, or maybe run away. Well, Renekton is always someone that's vulnerable to your abilities. Even if he stuns you, you can often start the animation for one of your CC abilities so he gets stunned as well, and this means that Renekton spends about 2.1 seconds going through this trade where you're able to fight back and he's just as vulnerable as you are. This is how long it takes for him to pull off a full combo. I'm not doing perfect animation cancels here, so I don't really have the, the best possible time and I also don't have that good of ping, but it should be about a fair estimate for an 
than average. Fizz, on the other hand, has his playful trickster, of course, and this ability leaves a full 1.1 seconds where he's untargetable, meaning there's literally nothing you can do to stop him from chasing you. Actually, it's a few tenths of a second on top of that that he'll be effectively invincible, since any ability being cast on him that's headed towards him in travel time while he jumps will be negated as soon as he presses his E, but let's just leave it at 1.1 seconds here for simplicity. If you subtract this time that he's untargetable during his combo, then his combo takes just 1.2 seconds to trade against someone with. His bleed, of course, helping him to deal even more damage after he's already disengaged. The difference between these two champions may seem a little bit small, but it's pretty scary in laning phase, and it's one of the reasons that currently Fizz is the best trader in top lane in League of Legends. While some champions try and do these elaborate combos to maximize their damage, and other champions will try and consistently auto-attack you for 10 seconds or more throughout an extended trade, Fizz is able to deal a ludicrous amount of damage in the shortest time frame I think we've ever Ever seen. There are some champions that can provide more CC late game, other champions that can be more tanky, or champions that can deal more sustained damage. Fizz isn't a 100% picker ban in competitive play because you may want to have something other than that lane dominance top lane when designing a team composition for your team, but Fizz in lane is such a dominant force you can't possibly match up against him unless the Fizz player doesn't understand how to play the champion, which is what makes him so strong in solo queue. His W in particular is where all of this damage is coming from. This is the ability that provides the bleed as well as a mark, where if the mark is activated and Fizz gets an Empower W off with an auto attack, it will deal an insane amount of damage. Just autoing once and then Wing at level 6 with the same items and everything deals a total of 270 damage to a single target. That's also a target that has 100 armor and 100 magic resistance, which most champions don't have at this point in the game. Most champions, like Renekton here, have much less than 100 armor and MR, as well as having less than 1,000 health, meaning that Fizz can sometimes deal a quarter, sometimes even a third of your health with a single auto attack plus an empowered W. I was making this video over multiple days, and some of those days turned into some pretty late nights, so if I'm wrong on some of this, please tell me where I am wrong. I mean, I, I have to be wrong somewhere, right? There's no way that Ryan thought this was balanced and put it in the game. Did I mention that Fizz's W gets its cooldown reset, and most of its mana refunded if it kills the target, like an Aurelia Q on steroids. The problem that Fizz currently has is he's dealing similar damage to other champions top lane, sometimes much better damage, but even if he is reeled back a little bit and he's just dealing the same amount of DPS as everyone else and the same amount of trading and everything, you can't help but get outclassed by his incredible abilities. He has some of the best abilities in the game. I might actually say the Playful Trickster is the best ability that exists as a basic ability in League of Legends. I mean, think about everything it does. It's a movement ability that you can use to move, obviously, for movement and team fights. You can also use it to wall hop up to two times per cast. You can use it for damage, of course. You can use it for crowd control to get a slow, and it also makes you untargetable, so you can use it to dodge abilities that otherwise would never have been dodgeable, and that's a basic ability, again, that Fizz has on a 10 second cooldown at level 5, and that's just flat cooldown. That's not even factoring in cooldown reduction, which every Fizz player always builds. This ability alone makes it viable for you to forfeit Flash and instead take Teleport and Ignite when you play Fizz top lane, giving you even more damage and all-in potential to crush your laning phase even harder while still having the global presence that Teleport provides. At the end of the day, it just doesn't make sense for you to pick any other top laner if Fizz is available to you in solo queue and if you understand how to play the champion. Honestly, I don't even know what Riot should do at this point to Fizz to try and balance him out or make him viable without completely breaking him. I mean, I don't play mid lane too much, so I wouldn't really know, but it doesn't feel like there's been many times in Fizz's history where he's been viable without being broken. It's like he's always either permabanned or so underpowered he's not worth picking, so I'm sorry Fizz mains for begging for these nerfs that will throw your champion back into obscurity. I really am. There's already some nerfs up on the PvE. But at the end of the day, if you're gonna give a champion such strong basic abilities, one of the best basic abilities in the game, Game, you can't also give him the best trading we've ever seen top lane, the same or better damage as every other top laner, the quickest trading we've ever seen top lane, and also make him a tank champion that as soon as you're taking his health down, he gets to go invincible and then do that again every 10 seconds. I don't want to cry for a rework if he can be brought in line and balanced out properly. I think for Fizz, the best way to balance him would probably be to 
give him damage numbers and magic resistance and armor and everything a little bit lower than everyone else's so his incredibly strong maybe even overpowered abilities come with a weakness some sort of weakness but it really feels like Riot has been trying to do this forever I mean they've given him so many mini reworks and tweaks that that just haven't done anything to make him any less broken in his game design ever since patch 5.2 which came out forever ago Riot has been trying to balance out bursty mages and the damage that they can deal making them basically assassins but for many of those champions that they've tried to fix Fizz included, not much has changed even now, two years later. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you don't have to like it. You don't have to comment. I'm not going to ask you to do any of that. Just yeah, thank you very much for spending a little bit of time with me today. I hope you didn't regret it and had some fun or found something interesting. I'll see you all in a couple of days, but until then, good luck in solo queue and have a wonderful day.